Here it goes. Tire spin. And there's 60 and 6.46 seconds. A hey, crew, I've got the key to that 23 Nissan Altima SR. We are going to take it for a drive, but first, let's check it out. It looks on the inside and outside. For the 23 model year, the Altima gets a refresh with a restyled front fascia. That V-Motion grille is in gloss black. The Nissan logo has been updated. There's an SR badge in red and dark chrome leading out from that grille underneath the LED DRLs and turn signals. There are also projector LED headlights above these non-functional corner vents in gloss black. This is a new color for 23 called Sky Gray Pearl, and it's interesting. It's got like a puttyish, almost purplish hue to it that I don't know if I like. At the side, the SR does get 19 inch dark gray wheels, and these I very much do like. They're wrapped in Bridgestone all season tires, 235 section front and rear. There are also splash guards behind the tires as an option. SR gets gloss black for the mirror caps, upper window trim, and then dark chrome for the lower window trim. Stepping back to look at the profile, there's that signature Nissan floating C pillar. Unfortunately on the Altima, it makes the back end look chunky and kind of raised up too high for a sedan. At the back, the SR trim gets a subtle lip spoiler. And then incandescent taillights and turn signals above a chunky lower bumper, gloss black diffuser, and two exhaust finishers. The Altima SR's design has some curb appeal, but it just happens to look a little too similar to the Sentra. And I understand keeping design in the family, unfortunately for the Altima, it cheapens the exterior. Everything except for those wheels, those are so cool. What do you guys think is the best looking generation of the Altima? I wanna know that in the comments. And let's check out the interior. Opening up and looking inside at this grained black leather interior with contrasting headliner and seat perforations with color, along with this orange and silver contrast stitching and upgraded floor mats as an option on the doors. It's hard plastics high and low, but with leatherette padding for the insert and armrest and contrast stitching once again, Gloss black here that's not gonna wear very well. Power windows, but not one touch. And a Bose nine speaker sound system on the SR trim. Stepping in. Behind my own seat, at six feet tall, I've got loads of leg room and the seat back's all in leather. The foot pockets are pretty good sized and thigh support is solid. Headroom, not so much. Head is pressed against the roof. Can't even make it back to that headrest, so it's gonna get a thumbs down from me. In the middle, we do have air vents and we've got two USB ports, one A, one C. The drive shaft hump is not that big, so you can make it over it pretty easily. But once again, headroom is the issue. If you were smaller, then there would be space on either side for other passengers. If there isn't a middle passenger, then an armrest comes down with two cup holders and padding. So the back seats would be good for smaller riders. Let's check out the front. Door close noise is solid. I like that. Smart Keel Sentry is for the front two doors. Looking inside the cabin, we see a power sunroof on the SR trim. The front seats have additional stitching on the bolsters and power adjustments. To release the trunk lid, hit this button here. It will only just pop it up. It won't send it all the way forward. Inside, we find 15 cubic feet of space, which is good, though not as much as the Honda Accord. If you need more, pull these two tabs and fold down the seats, but they don't go fully flat. There also isn't a handle to close the trunk lid, so you just use the lip and pull down. It comes down easy enough. Don't worry about the rattle, it's just my license plate cover. The front doors add this strip of plastic here that looks like metal, and some contrast stitching in the insert. Driver gets a one-touch window, and there are power adjusting, not power folding door mirrors. Sliding into the driver's seat. We find a heated leather wrap steering wheel with a flat bottom to it. How sporty is that? Contrast stitching on the inside. Feels good in the hands. There are paddles on the back of the wheel. A reconfigurable TFT display in between an analog tack and speedo. Up on the dashboard, there's contrast stitching and leatherette. This is injection molding over here. 
And then there's this fake carbon fiber trim with all of the downsides of gloss black and the smudging and the collection of dust and none of the benefits of carbon fiber. You can barely even see that weave. Above that, we do have a new 12.3 inch touchscreen for the 23 model year and it's pretty responsive. You can customize it and it does have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Under that is a volume knob and then these nice neural dials for your dual zone auto climate system, two USB ports, one A1C, DC outlet, and a wireless smartphone charging pad. I like the stitching and leatherette bordering the console, but then the console itself is finished in this sparkly gloss black. It's just gonna get maimed. Leather wrapping for your gear selector and on top of the stitched console cover, inside is a decent bit of storage. Visibility is quite good have a little blind spot at that stylized C pillar, but there is blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic as standard. The cabin overall, I like the leather seats. I like the layout of things. It's very easy to access anything you want. The infotainment system is an upgrade. The only things are just that there are cheapier trims in pretty obvious places, and then the rear headroom is just not great. All right, let's take the Altima SR for a drive. <laughs> All right, let's fire it up. A little car animation on the TFT. And no drive mode to choose from here. There's just a kind of sport transmission setting here below that leather wrapping on the gear selector that we're not gonna touch. So we'll be just in normal mode to kick things off. Pull back on the gear selector to go into reverse. That brings up a bird's eye view and a backup camera. Both of those are in terribly low resolution for a 23 model year vehicle. I mean, I love that there's the bird's eye view, but it's so grainy, honestly. Some parking spaces and bright sunlight, you can't even really see the markings. That needs to be improved. Backing up. Down into drive. We'll start off with a turning radius test, as we usually do. Cranking that wheel. It's a good turning radius. Yeah, I'm all set with that. Turn signal sound is gentle. I like that. And now for the world famous horn test. What? Oh, it's, it's like it, it ran out of breath. Like, oh, oh, I'm a horn. Just gonna, one sec, I'm a horn. <laughs> that was good, I needed that laugh. Okay, powertrains in the 23 Nissan Altima. We've got two options. The base motor is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder that makes 188 horsepower, but you can graduate from there a 2.0 liter turbo four cylinder. That's what you find in the SR that makes 236 horsepower and 267 pound feet of torque on 87 octane fuel. If you put in premium, now you're making 248 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque. That is routed through a CVT transmission. If you get the base motor, you can have all wheel drive or front drive. If you go with the bigger motor, then you're just locked into front wheel drive. The brake pedal, while I'm thinking of it, is very easy to adjust. You can kind of just creep up to a smooth stop. The throttle, meanwhile, is less easy to modulate. And I wonder how much of that is the VC turbo motor, this variable compression turbo engine that can change the stroke of the piston to either optimize efficiency or performance. It's really only going to change that piston stroke when you change your driving behavior. So for me, when I'm just at a consistent meandering pace, I should not notice that. I think that the awkward, kind of confused response of this powertrain package is from that CVT, which is supposed to simulate shifts. And unfortunately, I think it's just simulating the, the noticeable gear change, because of course the CVT doesn't have gears, not the smoothness that's inherent to a CVT. But let's see how this setup handles hard acceleration. I've got my race box set up here. I'm going to enter the sport configuration for the transmission. I'm gonna give it a brake boost off the line to build up some of that boost in the turbocharger and see how we do. Here goes. 
Tire spin. And there's 60 in 6.46 seconds. Not the quickest launch, no limited slip differential, so kind of a waste of power through those tires. And then we also just heard from that CVT doing its more traditional CVT drone. Hunting for a gear it would never find. But we do have these paddles here to again simulate gear changes, so let's see how that does. There is a delay, a defined delay, when I go fully on the throttle before the engine, transmission, whatever wants to be the culprit here, does respond. The down and up shifts work well enough. Yeah, that initial bog is most unfortunate and once again makes me really believe that CVT and sport should never be used in the same sentence. But as we're backing off here, let's just coast at some highway speeds and listen for the NVH level. which is appreciably modest. The cabin volume is low. You could easily have a conversation with your passengers without needing to raise your voice much over the just brush of wind noise and some of that tire and road noise. The seats are comfortable as well, though I wish there was a little more thigh extension here. My legs are hanging off somewhat uncomfortably. The ride quality, even though this is a sport tuned suspension in the SR, Is pleasant. Those 19 inch wheels with the skinnier sidewalls do transfer some of the road blemishes into the cabin. But this is far from egregious. And you can daily drive the Altima SR in comfort. But before we write off the Altima SR as a performance product or as an even sportier product, we should really get it to a good road and give it a chance. And as I prepare to pick up the pace, I found this nifty readout with the turbo boost and the compression ratio change from eco to power. Now I'm gonna plant my foot one more time. And when attempting to look past the slight hesitation, first to the throttle and then the CVT's drone, there's a good bit of power here. Certainly more than enough for a passing maneuver, but then beyond that, even enough to make you grin a little bit. <laughs> I just wish the soundtrack was complimentary and just that we had a torque converter automatic that I could actually operate in a more satisfying way than pulling on these paddles and being frustrated with the response. As far as handling is concerned, there's a lot of play to the steering rack, which makes it hard to know how much lock to add to properly negotiate a corner. Stab it on the brakes, good bite. Tires seem to be overwhelmed. It wants to push the nose with understeer, which then triggers traction control, which you cannot turn off. And so it robs you of power out of a corner. And I don't even think it would matter anyway, because we don't have a limited slip differential to get that power to the ground well. It's a heavier test of braking here. It doesn't want to give you consistent stopping power. I do like the feedback from the pedal. It doesn't go to mush on me. The buildup actually of resistance through the steering rack in a curve 
is decent communication. I just don't like how we set up for each corner. There's too much mystery in this steering rack. And then some pretty heavy lean actually as you change direction. That mated with an engine transmission combo that seems altogether out of sorts means that the Altima SR just does not respond well to being pushed hard. And that is going to lead me into my miles per hour word of the day, which for the 23 Nissan Altima SR is posturing, meaning intending to mislead with one's behavior. And for the SR trim of the Altima, it's wearing a sporty shirt, telling you that it is a sport sedan, but really it's not. Really it's just a streak of sport in a commuter hairstyle. It's, it's really just a good commuter car. Don't try to look beyond the sheet metal for anything more. Before we get into pricing and competition, let's go over the top speed and fuel economy for this Altima SR. Top speed is 130 miles per hour. Fuel economy is 25 mpg in the city, 34 on the highway, and 29 combined, which is a respectable figure for this segment, which includes sportier versions of mainstream sedans like the new Honda Accord Sport Hybrid, the Toyota Camry V6, and the Hyundai Sonata N-Line. The starting price for the Altima SR, as a comparison, is about $36,000, which itself is 10 grand more than the entry-level Altima, and this one as tested is about $37,000. The Accord Sport Hybrid starting figure is about $32,000. It makes 204 horsepower, gets to 60 in 6.8 seconds, and now that it's a hybrid only setup for the Sport, its fuel economy is great, it's 44 combined. Then there's the Toyota Camry V6, which starts at $37,000. It makes 301 horsepower from a V6 engine, gets to 60 in six seconds, and has fuel economy of 26 combined. And finally, the Hyundai Sonata N-Line starts at $35,500, gets to 60 in 5.2 seconds with its 290 horsepower engine, and has fuel economy of 27 combined. So the Altima SR is not the least expensive. It doesn't make the most power. It's not the quickest to 60. And with the Accord Sport Hybrid, it's not the most fuel efficient. That doesn't mean it's not a good sedan. The ride quality, the cabin quietness, the spaciousness, everything except for the rear seat headroom, and the relaxingly easy to use interface. Everything just makes sense in this cabin. All of those things make this a good commuter sedan. But the fact that it's trying to be a sporty sedan, at the very least, if not sports sedan, is really just kind of a sham. It's, it's not that. And so if you want something that is more than just a look of a sports sedan that actually executes that, there are better options. I think the Honda Accord Sport Hybrid, though it's lost the torque converter automatic, and though it's lost the additional power, is still a very satisfying to drive vehicle. The handling is great, the steering is great, the ride quality is solid, and now it gets incredible fuel economy. That would be my pick in this segment. If you like the Altima's look, if you like the usability of this sedan, I just wouldn't get the SR. Maybe choose one of the less expensive, more entry-level trims. And as I engage some of the driving assistance features, which, speaking of commuter friendliness, this vehicle does this very, very well, I'm asking you, which would you choose? The Altima SR, the Toyota Camry V6, the Honda Accord Sport Hybrid, or that Hyundai Sonata N-Line? Let me know in the comments, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this PUV Drive review. If you did, please like, comment, and share the video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell to get notified. Watch how it does well in the lane. It's sports. And I'll see you guys next time.